purpose-built medium lift um, cargo UAV called that, that we just announced. Um, it's got certain capabilities, um, one of which it's over a 500 nautical mile range on a, on a turbine, traditional turbine power, uh, power plant. It can lift up to 800 pounds of cargo. And depending on the conditions, you know, that can be ranged from anywhere to 300 to, to you know, plus miles with that kind of payload. Um, and it has all different types of payloads. It can be a conformal pod underneath it. It can external long line. It can do a whole bunch of different things. Um, the other part of it that's really unique is that it's designed to be um, shipped, stored, and deployed right out of a standard Connex box with uh, literally two people and be in flight in minutes. Um, so it's a very, very simple design, which is why we've focused um, so hard on a couple things. One is the simplicity and the nature of it. And this is what Command has done for 75 years. So we know how to build, design, and, and test and certify air vehicles. But it's built around affordability, number one, um, which is really important because of the simplicity around it. It's, a board, it's also designed around maintainability. Again, back to the simplicity factor and off the shelf mostly off the shelf type of, of parts and components. Um, and the other is um, it needs to be rapidly deployable, which it is. Um, so that affordability, maintainability um, are really important aspects of it. reasons uh, for that. One is, again, the, the affordability, reliability, uh, and maintainability. So the reliability and maintainability are really important aspects for the Marine Corps and others. And we felt with the traditional power plant, we can field this type of vehicle exceptionally fast, which is what the needs of the, certainly the Marine Corps and other people are trying to figure out. That was the first part. The other important aspect, because it's purpose-built, we fully intend to have different types of power plants, depending on the size and scale and range of family of these vehicles. Um, we can we can certainly get a hybrid type of power plant. We can even move to an electric power plant down the road if necessary, because again, this is a very simple design. So we, we really felt you know hard about how do we get something into the field, um, into our operators and our warriors' hands and, and the warfighters that they can operate very simply and reliably. And that's why we chose the a traditional power plant. It's a great question, and, and you know, it's funny. I would argue right now that it's it's a differentiator because it's the only one today in its class, weight, performance, payload class. Um, and we know that that there, there will be others, um, and there are others operating in different environments. But I want to classify this in a, in a unique way because the eVTOL movement and urban mobility is is a very important you know growing market for sure. There's a lot of companies out there, new and, and traditional, kind of looking at that space. But that's not what this is. This is not around caring people. This is around caring things. And therefore, you know, we feel that the applications on the military side uh, certainly are real. And we also believe strongly that the commercial applications of this type of, of, of uh, UAV are limitless. Um, but it's the only one that sits right now in this class, you know, trying to convert an existing platform to an autonomous is a very complex situation and an expensive one. And a lot of folks are doing that. What is really important here is this is purpose built to be autonomous. So again, that simplicity factor, reliability and maintainability are really important. The autonomous piece is, is something we're working with our partners near Earth Autonomy. We've been working with them already on KMAX. So they've been in the autonomous uh, world for many years, working on the ground side and vehicles. And now they've been working for, for several years on air vehicles. So that's the software that we're proving out right now with the KMAX. That same software will, will be migrating into the cargo UAV. Uh, so we're, we're still in the early stages. We, again, we just announced, uh, you know, this was a, an effort that started literally nine months ago from concept to design to, a, we have a 50% uh, scale flying prototype, which is very exciting. Um, and so we're just starting to, to, to reach out and we've already actually received several phone calls from, from interested parties. And there's no question that I think sort of if you prove out this technology and its application in the military, 
certain missions in the US, uh, we know globally that there's going to be a demand for this type of product. This is a great show that, that I've been to many years, um, and we're still, again, in early conversations, but we know the Army has the same problems and problem sets that the Marine Corps has to solve. Um, and, and we know that they're also exploring autonomous capabilities, not just, by the way, you know, on land, in the sea, um, and this is for the Navy, obviously, Coast Guard and others, Air Force naturally. We've been operating UAVs, if you think about it, for many years. Now it's, it's, the, it's the chance to really bridge the autonomous um, type of technology into cargo and, and really moving things safely and reliably from point to point and making sure that the Army, which again operates in a, in a very strong force, sustained force in certain environments, to sustain that force over time in a very distributed environment, you've got to leverage capabilities like autonomous uh, cargo. You know, we see this as a, a very large ecosystem. That ecosystem has all types of applications and different size, weight, class of, of types of UAVs, cargo UAVs. So we're excited to kind of figure out from, from this starting point where the medium lift and the K-Max, where do we branch from there? There's gonna be customers that are gonna to wanna to do, you know, smaller vehicles, perhaps even bigger vehicles, depending on, on the nature of their mission. So we're excited to kind of expand from there and see where, the, where this technology leads us.